In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the docking and attachment options that are open on the Dreamer. First, we're going to look at the forward docking port. And this is a port that is not part of the original Dream Chaser model. It's something I've added because I think it adds a lot to gameplay. One of the things I want to do with this model eventually is create a cockpit to allow school-age children to play in Kerbal Space Program. And the idea of docking with a port that you can't really see as easily is harder to get across to kids. So, for my purposes, this forward port was important, and I thought there are other people who are going to think this is awesome too. It's kind of inspired by the Delta Glider in uh, the Orbiter game, which is definitely a ship that is in some ways similar to Dream Chaser. As you see, it's just a standard 1.25 meter clamp Otron compatible nose there. Eases right into the stock docking port. Unhook and flip it around and take a look at the aft docking port. The aft docking port is the docking port that the actual Dream Chaser comes with. It's tricky because the wings sweep back enough that you have to be really sure of your clearance. Back in this docking you'll see me I have to turn at a really strange angle because I was nervous about the wings clipping to the uh, retracted solar panels here. I eventually, a later release of the Dreamer, plan to include a docking port that just stands out about a meter from whatever you've mounted it to. So as you build stations, you can throw that on there. It'll make it a whole lot safer and easier to bring the Dreamer to dock there. Are all lined up and rotated at our strange angle. If you've noticed my docking gauge there, that's just a normal Navy Fish docking alignment plug-in, whatever he calls it. And I've just reskinned it. All the graphics are there in the folder, so I've just got something transparent for the background instead of the metal background and added the needles up the way I wanted them to look. Just something a little more futuristic. It's not part of a release at any point. It's just something that I uh, do for my use. And it clutters up my view a little less when I'm docking, especially when I've got a lot of windows open, like I do for some of this video. As you can see, the rear docking port just works. It's also Clampatron compatible. And the other way to dock this ship, and I'm going to use the front docking port again, but it works for both of them. I'm just my reference part here on the HUD, or the multi-function display. Going back, and I'm going to set my target part, selecting the vessel, and then selecting again to get to that menu to select the docking port. And then we go to docking mode here on the MFD. And it gives me this awesome docking camera. It takes a little getting used to. In fact, this is going to be a faster than intended docking that you're going to see here, but it works just fine. They make good contact in the ship's dock without a hitch. But still, if I were doing a tutorial teaching you how to dock, I'd do it more carefully and uh, slowly. And uh, yeah, I'd get good at docking before I tried to teach you that. As you can see, it's a cool view. It's a awesome bit of the Raster prop, manager, raster prop monitor and uh, the Alcor props for it here. This is not my work, but I'm happy to have it on my pod. Oh, I didn't line that up very well, but there, the last minute it happens to center of the magnets grab, and it just works. And a quick look at the other ways to hook some vessels together here. This brave Kerbinaut is going to grab a radial pipe attacher, a, ah, radial pipe attachment gizmo from the Kerbal attachment system. If you don't play with KAS, you're missing out on a whole lot of awesome opportunities. Let's you go up and fix a fix a mistake you've made if you forgot the solar panels or the batteries on a piece. Add some opportunities to repurpose things along the way and. You know, I guess I could dock these vessels and transfer fuel, but this is kind of a fun way to do it, too. I'm planting it on there, and then selecting the link. 
taking you back in range of my cargo bay KAS module. You guys also get the pleasure of watching me fly around in IVA, which probably not my biggest skill in the game. Get in range and select link. And that's a rigid attachment. You could maneuver with the with that attachment in place, and it's wobbly and hard to steer, but it's rigid. The vessels aren't going to get closer or further apart. And like here with the winch attachment, that's something you have to be very careful with. I'm first grabbing the connector, and then I'm going to get back over to my container and grab the attachment point for it. You can carry both at once, which is nice. There's the radio connector port. Take. I didn't explain it there, but you need to jump into the GUI on the winch and pay out some cable using the out button there. Uh, your Kerbal can pull cable as he goes, but it keeps the cable under tension, and when you join those two vessels, they get jerked together, and it's dramatic, and as long as you're using plug docked, it's not dangerous, you're not going to damage your vessels. I just really could not find my way into range there. There we are. That is a docked connection in that we can transfer resources, but uh, you have to be careful because... If you yank on that cable, you will put the two vessels together. If they're docked, the colliders don't interfere, but if you had gone with plug undocked, you can still connect them together without making them the same vessel, in which case you can't transfer resources, but uh, you sure can break them when you slam them together. That about wraps it up. We're going to head home here.